I'm John Falardo, Vice President for Government Relations at the American Chiropractic Association. Standing here with our good friend and colleague, Rick Miller. As you can see today, we're on Capitol Hill on a beautiful fall morning here in early October in Washington, D.C. And from you folks from, from outside our environs, really encourage you, if you're ever coming to come to Washington, October is probably the month to do it. Speaking of October, we've got some things coming up, even starting tomorrow. The Institute of Medicine, we, we are told, is scheduled to release their recommendations to HHS on the development of the essential benefit package as called for under the new Health Care Reform Act. Rick, let's talk a little bit about that. Well, this is a critically important issue, of course, because you're talking about the federal government really defining what is an essential benefit, what ought to be uh, in a package of benefits that are offered to people in insurance plans. That's, that's, that's what's at stake, because this is not only symbolic, but this would be required in these plans regulated under the new uh, health care bill that's going into effect. Now, the concern I think here with the Institute of Medicine is we don't think they are going to recommend a precise listing no, not, of, no. of health care benefits. It's going to be more, uh, I guess the word you'd use is a methodology Method. or factors that the Secretary of HHS should take into consideration when she, uh, at least it's a she right now, when she goes about the task of promulgating the regulations, specifying what ought to be in that benefits package. And of course, this is uh, hugely important to the chiropractic profession. Yeah, well, we've been engaged throughout this entire process. This started the very beginning. This started with IOM uh, late last year in, in, in November. Uh, ACA testified at the IOM in January on this. So this has been a big issue, as you as you outlined, that we've been following uh, all along here. And uh, we'll be at the press conference tomorrow, and we'll be combing through. Uh, this this uh, recommendation yes. uh, over the weekend, and, and we'll be back with with uh, folks and talking more about about that as it evolves. And I think, of course, as it does evolve, the critical issue for the profession is we don't want to see final language in this essential benefits when that's defined in the regulations that specifically excludes chiropractic care. Now that would be very, very damaging yep. to us. That's something we really need to work hard to avoid and what we've been uh, working on. And of course the statute is written broadly enough that chiropractic care can be included so we don't want any backtracking that walls us off out of that benefits package. Good, good advice. Uh, Another issue here up on the hill, of course, we uh, is, is all the action of, the, or maybe even the inaction of, of the super committee. Uh, this is the joint deficit uh, reduction committee that was uh, formed uh, earlier in the summer yes. uh, to come up with uh, 1.4 trillion. That's a trillion with a T uh, in savings over the next 10 years. They've been meeting uh, most of it behind closed doors, uh, but Washington is is like the traffic here is pretty much in gridlock uh, over the actions or the inactions of the super committee. Everyone is just hanging on to see what they're going to recommend uh, on this. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, John, under the agreement that was reached uh, earlier in the year between the Congress and the President, uh, the super committee was created, as you noted, and, and they have to go about the mission of finding large dollar savings in the federal budget. As you said, 1.4 trillion, they could exceed that if, if they were mm -hmm. magically able to come to some sort of consensus there. It's a very difficult and tortured process, as you indicated. Now, I think a, a, a concern really to all of the provider uh, community, healthcare provider community, is what sort of cuts might this committee recommend to programs like Medicare and Medicaid? Uh, will they offer up some sort of solution to the sustainable growth rate formula in Medicare, which uh, greatly impacts all providers, uh, how they're ultimately going to deal with that issue. So there are a great many unknowns. Again, a concern specific to the chiropractic profession is will there be implemented some forms of cuts in Medicare that come back to hurt us or maybe even are specifically targeted in our direction. So we're on guard against that and again watching this process very closely. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars at stake. 
billion. Super right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Rick, let's talk about one uh, one last thing here. And uh, since uh, our last report, uh, we've gotten uh, favorable uh, yes. language in a Senate appropriations report uh, that accompanied their appropriations legislation, uh, talking about chiropractic, specifically talking about chiropractic in the military. And with all the reports that have come out in the last year or so, uh, saying that musculoskeletal injuries uh, are, are above, way in, uh, uh, above and beyond that of combat field uh, injuries, uh, that the committee um, they, they recommended that the chiropractic be uh, increased. The, 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 uh, the utilization of doctors of chiropractic at these military treatment facilities be increased. Very encouraging language, very encouraging that the, the chairman of that committee, uh, Dan Inouye from Hawaii, always been a chiropractic supporter. Very, very, very good language and we're already hearing that this has had a great effect uh, in, in the military treatment uh, facilities in, in the DOD. John, the process of chiropractic uh, getting its way, really fighting its way into major government health care programs, like the Department of Defense health care program, like the Veterans health care program, these are, it's an evolutionary story. It's been a, a, a story of progress in step after step after step always building, always increasing the chiropractic pres uh, presence within those programs, really starting from virtually zero right. and now up to a, to, to, to a, a very notable level of uh, uh, involvement. Now, a an issue there has always been uh, the intransigence of some of the bureaucracies in those departments really dominated by provider competitor interests, some in the PT community, some in the MD community, who've not really wanted to see chiropractic progress. But you know, that is breaking down. There's an evidence of the value of chiropractic and what it's doing for our troops out there. As you said, this committee report is solid evidence that people up here, at least in Congress, are recognizing that musculoskeletal injuries are a critical issue for the health and welfare of our men and women in uniform, and they want more access to chiropractic care to help address that problem. It's a good thing. It's well put, my friend. You, you really nailed it uh, with, with all that's been going on in the military, our troops in, in two different theaters right now. Uh, the utilization of doctors of chiropractic to help these folks in the field is going to be critical going forward. But Rick, let's just talk one last thing, uh, a pitch for Cairo Voice. Friends, we really encourage you to get your patients to join Cairo Voice. Go to www.cairovoice.org. All the information is up there. It's very easy, just a few mouse clicks. We're going to need these patients soon, especially when you talked about the, the, the whole super committee and what the, the cuts that they're looking at these people will have to be put on the front lines very soon. Look, this is a no-brainer. If there's one thing you should do in your practice, in your office, it's to invest a little bit of sweat equity. It doesn't take a great deal of effort nor a great deal of work to get involved with the Cairo Voice program. However, Cairo Voice is significant. It is the most important grassroots